The Cold War, the space race. On the night of October 4th, 1957, a glittering shape rose from the ground, a flame shooting from its tail. On the ground below, people began to cheer, she's off, our baby is off. They were actually cheering in Russian because the Soviet Union had just launched a satellite called Sputnik into space. Sputnik, a Russian word that means fellow traveler or companion, would circle around the Earth once every hour and a half, beeping constantly and sending radio waves back to Earth. It was the first man-made satellite to ever be launched into space and the first to orbit, that is, circle, around the Earth. A month later, the Soviets launched a second satellite into orbit. This time the satellite, Sputnik 2, had a passenger a dog named Laika. The Soviets wanted to see whether living creatures could survive in space. One day, they hoped to send a human being into space. Over in the United States, the news that the Soviet Union had managed to send two satellites into space, one with a living creature on board, caused Americans to react with awe and fear. American and Soviet scientists had both been working for several years to design a satellite that could go into space. Both countries wanted to be the first to launch a satellite. The Americans thought that they were well ahead of the Soviets in this race to space. When they realized that the Soviets had better and more powerful space technology, they were frightened. By the middle of the 1950s, the United States and the Soviet Union were firm enemies. After World War II, both countries had wanted to spread their own form of government through Western Europe and Asia. The struggles over the divisions of Germany and Korea showed that the two countries had begun to hate and fear each other. This hatred never erupted into open war. Instead, Americans and Soviets fought a battle without weapons. They tried to steal each other's allies. They refused to cooperate on anything. The United States called the Soviet Union repressive, tyrannical, and evil. The Soviet Union called the United States greedy, overbearing and obsessed with money. Both countries were sure that the other was trying to figure out a way to attack. This conflict became known as the Cold War. When Sputnik flew into space, the Cold War was at its height. The United States at once began to worry that if the Soviets could invent satellites that could make it to outer space, they could also use those rockets to carry powerful weapons over to the United States. In fact, on November 5th, 1957, two days after Laika the dog went into space, a New York Times reporter wondered if the Soviets were planning to explode a nuclear weapon on the moon. They weren't. Even though the United States managed to launch its own satellite two months later, the U.S. rockets were less powerful, and its satellites were smaller. The Soviets were winning the space race, and the Americans needed to catch up. As soon as Sputnik launched, American engineering schools were flooded with students who wanted to learn to build rockets. Congress created a new government agency, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, to oversee a program that would get Americans into space as soon as possible. That same year, Congress passed the National Defense Education Act, which gave schools more money to spend on teaching science. If Americans were going to win the space race, young scientists needed to be trained. Americans hadn't been so determined to triumph over an enemy since the Japanese had attacked Pearl Harbor. In fact, that's what the launching of Sputnik felt like to many Americans, an attack. The space race wasn't just a race. It was a war, and America was losing. The Soviet Union managed to stay in the lead for several years. They became the first country to put a human being into space. On April 12, 1961, Yuri Gagarin orbited the Earth in a rocket called Vostok 1. His flight lasted 108 minutes. He later said that as he passed over the Atlantic Ocean, he found himself thinking about his mother and how she would feel when she learned about his space trip. He hadn't told her that he was flying into space, and she didn't know about his trip until she saw it on the news. Yuri Gagarin landed in a field in Siberia. A few cows and a few peasants were there to watch him land. 
The news that a Soviet astronaut had been to outer space made Americans determined to work even harder at their space program. The President of the United States, John F. Kennedy, challenged the Soviet government to a competition. Who could get a man to the moon first? Six weeks after Yuri Gagarin's flight, President Kennedy asked Congress to find enough money for NASA to send men to the moon within eight years. Kennedy knew that this would be almost impossible. It would take an enormous amount of money, discipline, and hard work. But he believed Americans could pull it off. To the people of the United States, President Kennedy said, the exploration of space will go ahead whether we join in it or not. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do all the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Kennedy's wish came true. The United States did get a man on the moon in the 1960s. On July 16, 1969, the Apollo 11 spaceship was launched from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, NASA's headquarters named after the president. The Apollo 11 mission had one goal, land on the moon, step out, and then come back. Four days later, Astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin climbed into a smaller vehicle called the Eagle. It was designed to separate from Apollo 11 and land on the moon. The two men piloted it to the moon's surface and touched down on a low, even plane called the Sea of Tranquility. Armstrong sent a message back to Earth. The Eagle has landed. Then Armstrong and Aldrin climbed out of the Eagle. Americans across the country watched them on television as they descended the ladder down to the surface of the moon. Neil Armstrong was the first astronaut to put his foot on the moon's surface. As he took his first step, he said, that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. The astronauts walked around the moon for almost 21 hours, wearing special suits that kept them warm and supplied them with oxygen to breathe. There was very little gravity on the moon, so the astronauts could jump high and take huge steps. They performed scientific experiments and collected soil to take back to Earth. Before they left, they planted an American flag on the moon, a sign that although the Soviets had launched the first satellite, the Americans had won the space race, but they also left a plaque on the moon that said, we came in peace for all mankind. As a reminder that something greater than a simple political victory had been accomplished. For the first time, man had left the surface of the earth where he lived. Okay, so I'm not gonna ask any questions I mean, I'm not going to give you guys a worksheet for that, but I do want to just kind of go over quickly the questions. Um, so you can just listen to these. What country was the first to launch a so-called, a, a man-made satellite? The answer would be the Soviet Union. What was the satellite called? Sputnik, which meant fellow traveler or companion. What did the second satellite, Sputnik the two, second, have on board? Me. A dog? I wasn't listening. Oh, okay. What were two ways in which the Americans and Soviets fought a battle without weapons? They would try to steal allies, they refused to cooperate, and they called each other names. And all of this was called the Cold War. Americans were frightened when they heard about the two Sputniks because they realized that the Soviets had better space technology and they thought the Soviets might use satellites to carry weapons to the U.S. NASA stands for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. The National Defense Education Act gave schools money for teaching science, and the first man to go to space was Yuri Gagarin from the Soviet Union. That was in 1961. So at that point, President John F. Kennedy issued a challenge, and this Apollo 2 landed on the moon in 1969. Neil Armstrong was the first man to walk on the moon, and when he took those steps, he said, that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. Um, I do not think, um, there is some map work for this, but um, um, we'll go over that with the second part because it's combined together.